so it's all for play for still. I think so. Do you want to bet against us? Hi villains, welcome to For the Love of Paul McGrath podcast for a team sheet tantrum for our game today against Brentford. Um, I have no Neil with me initially, but fear not, I have another Irish accent to add to the stage. Um, not currently residing in Ireland, but all the way from Australia, we have Spud, otherwise known as Mark Holmes. Mark, good to see you, how are you? How are you, how are you mate? How are you keeping eye? All good, all good. Go on, make us all jealous. Tell us what the temperature was in Perth today. Ah, uh, a nice autumn, thirty-one degrees, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we've we've just been battered here by Storm Kathleen. You'd be happy to know, and I I've been worried about whether I would have power by the time the team she tantrum rocked around, or <laughs> or the match. More importantly, <laughs> we can get over the team she tantrum, but missing the match would have been a disaster. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize the weather was that bad. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There's 34,000 pe- uh, houses in Ireland with no power, but thankfully, for now, touch wood, ours is not one of them. So we're here, <laughs> and we're, we're here, and we're good to go. Um, how's things with you anyway? Are you, are you looking forward to this game? Are you apprehensive? Are you nervous? What are you thinking? Yeah, I was, I was actually only thinking about this game earlier today at work, and I was thinking it's it's almost the beginning of the league, almost a little running, isn't it? I think, I think. Una Emery's been saying all the time, like, oh, we'll talk about when we get to game 32, 33, 34. And you kind of almost wonder, did he think once we get past this Man City game early doors, if we're still in the running, would, would he be starting to talk and think about Champions League then, you know? And I think his actions Wednesday night kind of showed it was. So I think I think tonight, or today, sorry, Fee, yeah, I think you're going to see kind of a start like we've seen against Newcastle, against Brighton. I think we're going to come out and try and blitz them the first 15 minutes because... Brent, Brentford are not on a good run at the moment, but I think Thomas Frank is already looking forward to next season, looking ahead, and I think it's all about now him just getting enough points to just stay at arm's length away from that relegation. So you're seeing how they set up against Brighton during the week. I know Brighton still got a lot of shots off, but they, they didn't have much interest in winning the game. So he's, he's just trying to take points now just to stay ahead. And, you know, so I think if we can come out and get an early goal, it will have to open Brentford up. And yeah. I think that's where it becomes a game because I think the longer it goes on and Brentford kind of get into their shape because, um, yeah, so, yeah, I, I think fast start will be the aim today myself, Paddy. What do you think? Well, I think so. Um, they're not completely out of the woods yet, are they? Where are they not sitting? Enough. They're sitting on 28 points, so six six points ahead of Luton. So they will be looking over their shoulders. It, they, they can be caught, obviously. I don't think they will. Um, I haven't even I haven't even looked to see who they have waiting on grass for the next few games. Um, after us, they play Sheffield United, Luton, Everton, Fulham. Oh my God, Bournemouth, and then Newcastle. So maybe they're just thinking they get they get us out of the way, and then they'll move on to the, that uh, that run of fixtures that will probably see them keep their head above water. But I wouldn't I wouldn't be too worried about Brentford. Um, I mean, as in I wouldn't be worried about them going down because there's far too much below them that that just aren't performing. Their form, their form is terrible though. I think they've only had like one or two wins since the seventh of December. I mean, they're they really are on a bad run of form, and it's like they haven't been picking up much points. They're getting a couple of draws here and there, but they've, they've had a lot of losses since Christmas, and um, yeah. like they're plummeting towards it. But as you say, I think they've enough in the bank. Just to, that's why I think they'll co- co- they'd come today and happily take a point from Villa Park and then look ahead again. You know, but I I think I think Frank is smart enough. He'll think if we can just pick up a few points along the way, we'll be fine. You know. Yeah. And, and and to be honest, I, I, like it's not it's, it looks like it's not going to take much more than than thirty points to stay in this division by the looks of things at the moment. Isn't that mad? Yeah. Especially um, when you're looking looking at two two teams that will potentially stay up even with their point deduction. So it's it's tight down there, and but it's it's, it's tight at the top, and and that's what we'll focus on in the next few minutes. Yes. What what way are you feeling with regard to to our Champions League aspirations? Um. I think uh, as midweek fixtures go with nine, ten games to go and seeing the team that Emery put out during the week and considering we were at the Etihad, for a loss, I think the week couldn't have gone much better for us when you take away our loss out of it. Spurs dropping late points, 
um, or sorry, Spurs dropping points to West Ham. United obviously throwing away a 3-2 lead in, in, in the depths of injury time. So I think if we go in and win today, Emery will feel a bit justified in what he did during the week. A lot of pressure on him to get it right today, though, I think he's... But um, I, I think it was a good, apart from our own points total, I think it was a good mid- midweek for us, you know? Yeah, I think I think it's, uh, as you say, the, 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 the games around us that... <laughs> Uh, my family will tell you. I, I think I celebrated that Cole Palmer winner, <laughs> like I would have celebrated an Ollie Watkins winner. As much as I can't bloody stand uh, Chelsea, that's the, the way it is, and 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 everybody it was just delighted to see that go in. But uh, you may or may not can see him there. But Neil has just joined. With it, oh my God! Look at that. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi, Neil. I tell you this watch there's a storm here and this 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 feds might actually take me out so you might see my my demise on camera here because uh I don't know if you can see it <laughs> I might actually move because this I is you uh, should move from there Neil to be honest <laughs> great for content <laughs> how's everyone doing is that good mate how are you how's the stag going Still Kenny some spot in it <laughs> I had to stand in bed until about one o'clock. Yeah, but just now we're losing him. We are. (laughs) (laughs) You might need you might need to run the gauntlet of that fence, Neil, or we're gonna lose you. (laughs) No, no, we've lost him. Um, what's your thoughts on today, Paddy? Well, look, you mentioned there that there is a bit of pressure on on uh, on Uno Emery. He needs to um, he needs to fight back after what he he look. There's loads of ways of looking at what happened during the week, but we we basically put out an understrength team that 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 didn't do the didn't do themselves justice, didn't get anywhere near Man City in the second half. So it is an absolute um, must win game, I think, for us today, and one of the ones that he would have earmarked. To get the three points on the board for me, Neil, you're back with us. No, he's not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paddy, if today, if the, if today didn't go the right way, what, what do you think happens after that? Like, what, where would you start here marking points? Then, do you think? Well, well, I think, I think we we we've got we've the, as as you quietly <laughs> we alluded to. It's it's the the teams around us that are that are capitulating. So if we could, if we could keep going the way we are, and and start picking up results, nice. you know, I think that's that's the most important thing. It won't be easy by any stretch of the imagination, but um, we if if we lose today, it means we probably have to go away and get a win at Brighton or Crystal Palace or somewhere along the way. Um, I I'm kind of of the opinion we need to win four games, and the four the four games I had, uh, the, the, I, I mean four games to be guaranteed fifth place. Um, and we got one last week. We lost during the week. I want one today. I'll want one against Chelsea, and I'll want one uh, either against Brighton or Crystal Palace, I would imagine. And then if you get one around that, I'm, I'm sure I've left out a fixture in there now off the top of my head. Probably the team Bournemouth at home would be another one, I suppose, that he'd be Bournemouth going there, Mark, wouldn't he? Bournemouth at home. Well, Bournemouth, yeah. though. Well, we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but like I think I think this weekend as well, like... Uh, I think Spurs have a trickier fixture against Forest than, than people realise. Like for, for, Forest are one of these teams that can just pull out a performance. And and and, and there's a bit of a, a, a side thing going on as well. Like Nuno Spirito Santo is going to be hell-bent on beat, beating them. Things did not end well there for him. He'll have his boys well fired up. Oh, I absolutely think so. Uh, if you can keep filling there, I have the team nearly ready to go up on the screen oh, here. Lovely, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it's important that we get the business done and we can sit back and just watch the rest of the fixtures. Hopefully Liverpool do a job and United for us tomorrow. Then even Forest take a point off Spurs, you know, come Monday, it'd be, be beautiful, you know. So, but we, we just got to get our own job done and I, I can see it happening, you know. Yeah, and, and you're dead right. If we get our own job done, then we've... We, we've uh... We can sit back and relax and put our feet up and watch what everybody else does. So the team is in. I'm 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 gonna hazard a guess that I'm gonna put this up right, but if I don't do it, <laughs> we'll uh, we'll see what happens. Um, it's coming up on the screen. Okay, so we've Martinez, Conza, Carlos, Torres, Luca Dean, Leon Bailey, John McGinn, Douglas Louise, Morgan Rogers, Yuri Tielemans, and Ollie Watkins. Now I 
I typed in that team with the exception of Tielemans before the team was picked. And I anticipated nice. that he'd go with Bailey Bailey Watkins and uh, Diaby. So that that was that's what I've uh, have done wrong in that team. But I don't think we've any complaints about what's there, do we? Oh, I, th- I think there's a lot of sense in that team. I, I would assume that it's going to be McGinn and Dougie with, with, with Tillemans up behind Ollie would be my guess. Um, I think Rodgers has earned a start, to be honest, ahead of Diaby today. Um, I, I, I think Diaby and Rodgers, I think Diaby is more likely to come on and have an impact. I think let Rodgers come on from the start, you know, gain a bit of confidence because he he's a ball carrier that we've been missing with JJ out. And... Um, I think I, I think it makes a bit of sense. I think the Abbey will probably start against Lille, but to have the Abbey coming off the bench later on, it, it, it's something to hold back and have a bit of a weapon coming off the bench. Though. So it makes a lot of sense to me. Absolutely. Team is in, Neil. Can you hear us? Still me and lads. Yeah, Watkins starting. Emmy Martinez start. Oh, I see the bottom. Martinez, yeah. Kanza, Carlos, Paul, Dina, McGinn, Luis, Rogers, Tielemans, Bailey, Watkins. My job here is done. <laughs> <laughs> My job here is done. <laughs> back to the bar, Neil. Back to the bar. <laughs> No no complaints whatsoever. Um, I think Dina is is right call at left back. I think a lot of people have been calling for it recently as well, and, and, and I just think he's, he's he's a steadier hand. I think at left back. And look, Morgan Rogers is game by game. He's getting better and better and better. And uh, I, I think it would have been a mistake to take him out of the lineup, especially with no Jacob Ramsey for the rest of the year. So. Having Morgan Rogers there, I think, is uh, is huge. It's a huge vote of confidence for him. Zaniolo coming off the bench. You have um, yeah, the obvious who guys were mentioned there as well to come off the bench. And look, Yuri Tielemans now back in his um, uh, back in his uh, in his more habitual state. I think up there, closer towards the the, the, the striking department. There, I think it's going to be great. And look, yeah, roll it on. I, I'm I've been confident in this game, more confident. I was confident after the, against Man City. I, I'm still going with a two nil win for Villa. I'm oh, sorry, two one win for Villa today. And uh, I've been I've been I've, I've been more vocal today. I think that that's probably because I'm rolling over from last night. But um, I think today is the day that we clinch fifth place because ne- tomorrow United don't get a result against Liverpool. I've said this, I've been going back about six, seven, eight weeks ago. I said I think Villa will clinch uh, a Champions League spot by uh, by the Bournemouth game, given that we will have coefficients and stuff like that out for after the European games next week and, and the week after. And uh, I think today is a day in the stepping stone for it. And just I'm as positive as positive can be. Now, I know I'm positive because of a lot of other reasons, but I've been positive for the last 10 or 11 weeks uh, saying this and, and I think today is the stepping stone that the, the Luna Emery has realised has, has analysed has, uh, has, has kind of pointed to um, it's going to be a tough game don't get me wrong but um, I'm, I'm look we, we have to be confident with this team because they've, they've pulled results out of the bag all year and yes we've had bad results against Liverpool against against uh, Newcastle against City if you want to call that a bad result against Spurs We've pulled results out of, the, out of the bag against teams when we needed to win. And uh, I've no reason to not believe that Una Emery is going to do the same again today. Hey, lads, would you, would, would you agree? Because obviously Mings has not been available all season, pretty much. Would you say of the available players all season, that's our strongest back four? Because I'm kind of beginning to think it is. I, I wouldn't have put Carlos in there originally, but most of our clean sheets have come when Carlos has played. In, I don't know if that's factually true, but I, I, I think it is. I, I think... I think I, but, it's absolutely fine. We don't do facts in this podcast. Everything is everything is opinion <laughs> but, in this podcast. It's, it's I would say great. Carlos has had more had more clean sheets than Longley. I would say we went a long period there when Carlos was injured, no clean sheets. So, uh, the City I, game, I think, the Arsenal game. I, I think you're right, Spud. I think you are right. I think you are because I um, I think we're just blessed as well in the fact that you know um, you talk to a lot of fans and, and they cry out for our, our uh, five centre halves, you know, to have that depth and have that rotation at times, and we have rotated at times. And like, I, I know not look. Uh, I suppose Colin has made a shovel with regards to it. Are they all perfect? No, but they've all done a job when they've needed to do a job. And you know, same can't be said for other back fours within this uh, or, or back eights, if you want to call them. You know, with the reserves that they have there within this league, and and, and that's one of the reasons why Villarro are in the lofty position that they're in is because. We've had tons of injuries in the back four. We've just had guys come in and just get on with doing their job. And yes, has it been perfect? No. But has it been functional? It absolutely has been. And, you know, we're at the business end of the season where functionality is going to cap 
the brilliant six nils that we had against Brighton, whatever I can't remember what the score was against West Ham at the start of the season, the four nil. You know, they were great to have at the start of the season. Now we're in the functionality time of the season, and I think this is going to be one of the ones that we're we're going to look back on. And if we get the result today, obviously, you know, the back four at the end of the season is going to be one of the big plus points. The fact that we've been able to roll in, roll out players there, make Kanze into a right back, have Longley in there to compensate for when Paul Torres was out and do. 85% or maybe 90% of the passing the, the Torres is able to do. And then we were all able to do it without Tyrone Mings, who, do, who was our spiritual leader at the start of the year. So I think you're bang on the money there, Spud, as well. With regards to the back four, this is our strongest back four we have. But I think it's worth saying as well that the back, the, the reserves, the defensive reserves that we have as well, have been a massive plus point for us this season. Because when they've, when they've rolled in, it's just been seamless, you know. And fair play to you and I, Marie, for, for, for getting that all going. Would anything concern you, Paddy, about the Brentford team? Um, well, well, we'll run through it. I suppose the big news is that they, they have opted to leave I, Ivan Tony on the bench. Oh, really? and, and And that's that's a big bonus, I suppose, because he always tends... To, well, look, he's a good player. He always tends to have a good game against us. So they've gone with uh, Flecken, Roeslev, Zanka, Oyer, Collins, Regulon, Janelt, Jensen, Damsgaard, Vissa and Embuemo. And then Paddy, the your, pronu- your, your pronunciation is second to none there. Well getting done. better. Getting better. <laughs> I don't know about yeah. that. But... Oh, shit. Then, then they put a goalkeeper in on, on the bench that I can't pronounce. <laughs> Stratashoa, Mopai, Godos, Onyeka, Tony, Lewis Potter, Baptiste, Jisoo, and Yarmaluk. So he must, he must have a knock, does he, Tony? Surely they wouldn't. Strange, really really so but like what, what you were saying there when we, when we started about maybe he hasn't earmarked this as one of the ones he's yeah. got to pick up uh, the results in and he's saving Tony for those games like we did the other night. Maybe he's taking a leaf out of the uh, out of the Unai Emery uh, <laughs> <Cool book. laughs> yeah. So, um, but, but we've just got to wait and see. Um, like maybe, maybe, maybe Tony wasn't performing in training or, or wasn't impressed with him on Wednesday night and just decided to go back to... He probably, he's what? probably trying to get Mbwemo a few minutes for the run in as well because Mbwemo has not played a lot like this this season, like second half. So he's probably trying to get him minutes yeah. before they play Luton and, and the likes, you know? Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm um, a bit surprised Lewis Potter didn't start for, for Brentford today. He's, uh, he's a player that, like, every time I've seen him play, he's been... How would I put it? Like... He's obviously an English player, but like he just gets out to play in his football. He gets out to play in the Premier League as well, and uh, I think he's been underrated. Now, saying that, their midfield has always been their strength, and they always go with that five across the midfield to include their wing-backs as well. And look, getting the likes of uh, Norgard and Jensen and those guys in there with Janlet, that that's been their real anchor point for him, and that's that's been one of the biggest parts of Thomas Frank's success. But I think Lewis Potter will have a say in this game when he comes off the bench. You guys mentioned Gadas. Uh, you guys mentioned Tony coming off the bench also as well, and Mope being there as well too. So, like, you know, it's it's, it's not going to be easy, and they're going to have bullets to be able in the chamber to come off the bench, like we will as well. And like said, the Abbey, Zaniolo, uh, Duran, if, if needed, and uh, yeah. So, I think I think we will see lots of substitutions in this game. I think both teams have, have, have lined up in that way to be able to give 60 minutes balls to the wall and then give fellas then 30 minutes to come on and try and affect the game. And Unai Emery's been really good at that. We saw, and, and, and teams are doing that more and more often. Like we saw Chelsea versus Manchester United. It was Chelsea substitutes that came on. Yes, Cole Palmer gets all the all the plaudits, but um, Madueke comes on, wins the penalty and, uh, you know, changes that game as well for them. And uh, I think substitutes more and more, we're going to see them be the guys that are going to be the catalysts to change uh, after teams start to f- feel, feel each other out over the first 50, 60 minutes. Um, Especially with games going on longer, no, Neil, as well. With games yeah, going on to 100 minutes and stuff, like, yeah. subs are becoming vital. And uh, there's, a lot of sub- there's a lot of substitutes after getting an assist or a goal this year across the whole league. Like, I absolutely agree. Jurgen Klopp uses it massively. Like, you know what I mean? His substitutes have always have an impact in the game. Like. Cody, Cody Gakpo comes on, gets the second goal against uh, against Sheffield United. It just solidifies them and then they go on to win 3-1. Absolutely, 100%. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, like, and I know Danny Murphy and Danny Mills will probably turn in their seats wherever they're sitting at the moment when they give out about, uh, like, say, set-piece coaches and so on. But there's substitution coaches and everything coming into games now. And people say you're overthinking it. But it's just eking out that extra percent every so often. And the likes of Liverpool, the likes of Man City, the likes of, of, uh, of uh, Arsenal are doing that. And they're doing it to great effect. They're managing minutes. 
they're bringing players on at the optimal time. And look, there's no exact science to it, obviously, because the game of football is played in, in, in a flurry a lot of times. But if you can get those games where you look back after the end of the season, you go, you know what? We had five games where by substitutes came on and won us a point or won us three points. They're worth their weight in goals. And that's the reason why we have five subs now. That's the reason why we had three subs back in the day. And that's the reason why they brought it up from one sub or no subs back in the day was, you know, I think you need to be able to freshen things up as the game gets more and more competitive. And uh, I'm just delighted that Aston Villa are in the position to be able to do that with like Zanny or Bailey Duran in an attacking sense. The defensive sense, maybe not so much, but Longley not being on the bench, you know, we're probably a bit, a bit light there from a defensive point of view. But it's up to Chambers now to come on and stamp his, stamp his authority if he, if he wants to be in this club next year. Ken Kessler Hayden and so on. So, uh, young Tim, Kenny Mann, whoever else, you know, there's there's a mixture on the bench there. And, and they will have a say between now and the end of the season, the last seven games. Hey, Paddy, o- over, o- Paddy over the season, sorry, um, who, who would you say has been our most effective sub? Who has come on and had impact in the game the most, like over the season? Who, who's been the best lad to bring off the bench? Jeepers, I, I suppose there's a science and you'd, you'd find it very quickly, but uh, in my head I'm saying Bailey, when 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 we've left him out of games, has been has been oh, yeah. very effective when he came on. Um, Tielemans has probably been our most used sub, I would imagine, especially in, in the, the start of the season. He, he spent a lot of time coming off the bench. Um, Statist- <laughs> statistically, it's the Abbey. Is it? Like the, the, the Abbey's output, guys. Like When you look at your, your goal contributions and so on, you look at the the key passes you look at you know you look at all that advanced data and stuff like that Gabby is actually having a way better season statistically and data wise than he is to the naked eye so yeah. for me I you're right in Paddy when you said start of the season Bailey was coming on and he was just hitting the mark he was changing games getting going. Yeah. he was exactly and we're just in a, in a beautiful position whereby we're allowed now not allowed but we're able to start Bailey and now we've the Abbey coming off the bench and while we might mourn and groan about him losing the ball or maybe he's under undersized for, for the Premier League currently at the moment or whatever we could have all those conversations the wrong conversations to have but statistically at the end of the day when you look at it he's having an impact in games with assists with key passes with crosses with whatever and uh i think that's all taken into account as is Tielemans. you know Tielemans plays a, a true ball like nobody else in his team he's like the second the ball leaves his foot at times when it's when it, when it doesn't leave the ground and it's, it's slid along the ground it, it, as a true ball it's like caramel like these beautiful passes and and we're just lucky to have. You can't, um, can't play like nobody else in the team anymore. Now that we have Morgan Rogers doing similar similar work and true balls. <laughs> well, it's Morgan White, Morgan Rogers actually now that JJ's on the team, he dribbles like nobody else in the team. Sorry, he, he, so he, that's he, our he's our ball point. carrier that we've been missing, yeah. and I think he, we're lucky he came in in January. Now, now that we know JJ's out for the season, because he, yeah. he, and he's getting more confident. And I think Emery Emery obviously rates him. He's giving him a lot of minutes there lately. So yeah, uh, like um, I, I, I think though what you're saying about Diaby, about the statistics, about uh, how, how good he's been. I think with Bailey, there was periods where I thought he wasn't going to make it. You know, I, 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 you know, I've never really felt that about Diaby. I always look at him, oh, there's definitely a player there, there's definitely a player there. You know, <laughs> you know of yeah. course, but I, I think it was probably 70% of the Villa base probably thought Bailey wasn't going to make it at some point, you know. And I would say more, I I would say more than 70%, and I was definitely, yeah. I was definitely in that percentage, and I, I'm in that percentage about Diaby still. I still think the jury is out, but he is being given afforded the same amount of time as Bailey has been. I hope to to. I kind to, of always thought the Abbey would make it, though. I think I think he just he looks like he's impacting all. He might not always be coming off, but he's always yeah. trying to get involved. Well, I think I think in his favour is he pro- he was probably doing more than Bailey did yeah. when when Bailey wasn't at a, at a full tilt when he when he first joined. So that would be my opinion on the Abbey, but still. We haven't got the Diaby that Leverkusen have had <laughs> previously, so it, it's it's just a question of finding how we're, how we're going to shoehorn him into this team and get the best out of him, and uh, it'll take better men than the three of us to to figure that <laughs> one out <laughs> and to motivate him to do so. I'm, I'm going to leave you guys in a moment. Uh, and, and reason being is because I'm, I'm on Wi-Fi here or whatever, but the bus is leaving to go to another pub. But um, I just want to leave, leave you guys in this one. I think it can't be underestimated uh, today the, the impact that John McGinn is going to have. Like, I, I know I, 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 I said it in the post-match podcast after Man City, but like, I don't want to over the pudding with him as well because we know he's a good player or whatever. And, and, and sometimes you can get kind of the carrot blue glasses, but... The work rate that guy does is just second to none. I, I've been, like, I'm on the stage here with 30 people. The first name out of a lot of people's mouths were Watkins when they wanted to talk to him about Villa. Obviously, I'm the only Villa fan in the village. 
so everybody's talking to me about it and, and they know I'm doing it here and they're all just essentially here. I'm surprised that they haven't piled in and tapped me in the middle of this. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, they all talk to me about Watkins. And my my report, retort to them is, yeah, Watkins has been great and he absolutely has and I'm the conductor of the Watkins fan bus. But the more you see the last three games when you haven't had John McGinn, the more you miss the amazing work he does around the field. That guy will have a special place in Aston for the fourth door if we get Champions League this year. The first time we've ever done it. I know it's not winning. And, and Ange Pascal, you said a great thing. He goes, if players want to come here to get Champions League, then they don't need to come here. They want to come here to win leagues. And that's the way everybody should be thinking. I, I know that 100%. But it's incremental steps. And getting Champions League is huge. And signing him for two and a half million from, from Hibs has been some of the best business we've ever done. Thank you, Steve Bruce, for that, number one. And secondly, I think that guy is just so pivotal the way Aston Villa play. He's touching 30 years of age if he's not already. And, and we should cherish every moment we have with him because I genuinely believe that uh, today we're going to see more vigour within that midfield. We're going to see more, uh, more um, I suppose, more, more space within that midfield because of how much work he does around there. And uh, it's something we need, I think, because the last couple of games we got bogged down in midfield. We've had to go wide. It's been fine. But it's not been perfect, I think. And, and even against Wolves, it wasn't perfect because we, we weren't able to dictate that possession. The reason we weren't able to do it was because McGinn wasn't there covering off those passing lanes from other teams. He's just, from a tactical also, point of view, also he's, he's, his, he's, his, he's ability to, his ability to roll with his bum and open the pitch up for us. We've missed that hugely. You know, it's, it's, it, it, you're dead it, right. It, it may sound funny, but it, 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 it's a huge weapon we have and it gets us out of a lot of tight spaces, like, and, and it's been yeah. badly missed. Badly missed, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, guys. I'm yeah, going to leave you go because I'm going to leave you go because I'm not going to watch this back because I'm the clue what I've just said in the podcast. <laughs> but um, I will be watching the game and the villa. I will be on for the post match podcast, so uh, I may not be as eloquent as I am today as I am right now in two hours' time. But uh, we'll see afterwards. I'm predicting a two one Aston Villa win, and I'm predicting that this is the day we put our name on at least fifth place in the Premier League. And I hope to Jesus it happens because I don't know am I ready for the promotional roller coaster with seven or eight points in me <laughs> for later on. So we'll see you guys later on. Thanks, William. See you later. And, uh, Good luck. Right, take him out there. Save him the job. Um, <laughs> while we're chatting there, if you want to get your scores in, I'll do a quick run around. I'm not as uh, silver tongued as Neil to be able to rattle them all off, but I will do my best. But in the meantime, the 700 and odd people in here, please do give us a like and uh, share everywhere you can and, and do everything you can to, to help the podcast. We much appreciate it. But get your, get your score predictions in there and we'll do a quick run through it. And uh, I, I will start them there. Um, Mark, I'm going to embarrass you a little bit here now because I, I want you to tell the people where they can listen to your podcast. I know you've taken a bit of a sabbatical. But uh, please do tell people where they can find them because there's a bit, there's a back catalogue there that people can can watch. And uh, I have to say, it's a podcast that I really enjoy. Um, it's called Spud Talks Football. And basically, I just bring people on from all different backgrounds of football to tell their story. Like, I, I've had guys on to speak about what it's like to be a Coventry City fan as a, as a blind disability fan and his experiences going to the games. I've had Paddy on to talk about his experiences going to Europe and watching random games. And I just have a variety. I've had a variety of guests over the uh, each episode is different, really. I've had season ticket holders on for Wrexham to talk about how the town has changed for them since takeover. And I've had people on from Sheffield Wednesday to discuss all the shenanigans that are going on at their club and the roller coaster that their owners have put them on. And uh, yeah, just, just if you if you check it out and give it a like and a share and give us a bit of feedback on it, it'll be really good. And yeah, I, I've taken a little break the last couple of weeks since Christmas because time has just been my enemy with work and stuff. But I have a couple of excellent guests lined up in the in the next couple of weeks, and I'm going to get back into it and get get back into the swing of it. So you can find it. It's, it's an audio only podcast at the moment. You can find it in all the usual audio places like Apple, Spotify, um, Acast. So yeah, just great stuff. Just talk football. Cheers, buddy. Yeah. And I, I, I was privileged to be your first guest, and I, I enjoyed it. Yes, yes. And I most listened to guests today. <laughs> <laughs> which, which again is strange because, you, like, I, I, I have the height of respect for you because we, we sit here and watch Villa at this time of day, usually what, watching in or, or later in the day. But you, you get up midweek matches at three o'clock in the morning to watch watch games before you go to work and stuff like that. 
you know, it's it's incredible what you do. So to be able to coordinate those podcasts and be able to record them, because I think we recorded ours at, at nine o'clock in the morning one morning. It's just, it's, <laughs> it, it, you know, it's bloody hard for you to do. And, and you know, that, that should be uh, identified when we're talking about it, because uh, I can imagine it is quite difficult to do for, from your point of view. But I, I would urge you to stick with it. And I would urge anybody who hasn't listened to the podcast to go back and listen to them. They'd be a nice time filler when you're uh, out walking, jogging or driving or whatever you do, whatever you listen to your podcast if you're just sitting on your couch it's a nice listen so give him a listen i'm going to run through some of your score predictions first of all my Hanlon, thank you so much uh for becoming a member there and half point for paddy podcaster yeah i guess you were thinking neil wouldn't make it in in his drunken state um i think frank may uncharacteristically defensive so hope we can get past the low block like you i hope we get at them today and stay sharp. Yeah, it's 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 a huge, huge game for Aston Villa. Um, Jordan is in there. Our our, fr- our friend Paul McGrath's son, Jordan, good to see you. Um, hope, you get, hope you get somewhere uh, quiet to watch the game today. So we'll run through some of the scores. Urgent Singh is going 3-1 Villa. Duncan is going 3-1 Villa. Jared Levy is going 3-0. Uh, Flange says up the mighty Villa. Paul says 2-0 Villa. Dermot Bourne, hope you're well. Dermot, 2-0 Villa. David Dwyer, 3-1 Villa. Paul is going 4-0. Bailey, Watkins, Tielemans and Rogers. I think that might be like the perfect day if, like if, that, if that comes around. Mark Brannigan is going 3-1. I presume that's 3-1 Villa. Bertie is going 4-0. CC is going 3-1 to the mighty Villa. Richard Edwards is going 2-0. Win, clean sheet. Bailey and Watkins. Yeah, i take that all day long. i take a 1-0 today for sure. Um... John Doran is going 3 1 Villa. Western Union. I thought that was John Doran there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> this show's getting huge. <laughs> he's watching us on the bench while he's warming up. Uh, John Steele goes 6 1. Now, I would definitely take that one. Yeah, 100%. Michael Huggins is going 3 0 to Villa. Michael Smith is going 2 1 with Rogers to score. Bubblegum Crisis 1394 is going 2 0. Super John McGinn and Ollie. And I'm going to do a couple more because my. Mouth is getting dry. <laughs> uh, Lion Pedersen is 3-1. Terry Turner is 3-1 to Villa. And we'll finish on Kat Cannon, who goes 3-2. What did you say your prediction was? Did you give one? No, I haven't given it yet. Um, I, I'm, I'm thinking 3-1. I, 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 think, I, I think we're going to a nice 2-0 early lead. Half time, going to half time. Um, I, I, think, I think Brentford will score. They just, they, they just tend to nip goals even when they're not playing well, except for against Brighton. But um, I think three one. I think I think it'll, I like to think it's comfortable. I think we're. I, I'm hoping to see a nice fast start. I think I think it's the way because we just can't let their five midfielders settle into shape too early. And I think if you if you can get an early goal, then they have to open up some bit. And I think yeah. you can pick them off. Then you know. Well, I think that's the, that's the important thing. I I I have in in the back of my head after seeing. Ivan Tony will be sprung from the bench that I'm going to go with 3-1 and it'll be 3-0 before he comes on and it, it, we will take Dougie off to preserve him and hope that he doesn't get that. Uh, <laughs> in, what we really don't want is to, is to lose him for the next two games. So, is it he, one year when he's out? Is that for two games? That, 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 I'm, reliably, I'm reliably informed that that's, that's all he's missing and then he's out for, uh, for two games. So we can do without that at this stage. So he's, he's vital to us. But Super John McGinn is back, and as Neil rightly says, I think he's going to be the difference today. I think he's going to re-energise the team. I think he's going to make a huge difference. So I'm going to go with 3-1, and I'd love to see Morgan Rogers break his duck today oh, and, and get it I'd like to see Diaby get one off the bench as well, because if we could, if, if he could come on and score one, like we could do with him having a confident running because with Europe and stuff, and he's probably at his best performance in Europe. If he can start turning them into the league games, so it'll be a massive weapon for us in the last few games, you know, having someone needing to come off the bench to change games, you know. And um, just, I was going to ask you there about the um, about Rogers. Um, how, how have you found him so far? Um, I my I'm still on the fence as such. He he looks like he has the makings of a really good footballer. Yeah. I. I'm reserving judgment simply because I think he needs a good preseason, a, a Unai Emery preseason under his belt. But I think bringing him in in January could prove to be a master stroke. He he'd be well adverse on what we're doing, and will be, I would be imagine be chomping at the bit to get back for preseason training. And I think we'll see a quicker, fitter Morgan Rogers in at by the start of next season if he's not 
overdoing the training at the moment and 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 trying to to change that. But look, he's a young lad. Changes can be made. He he can adapt very quickly. But he, he the way he passes the ball is amazing. Um, his dribbling while it needs a little bit of fine tuning is is de- you can definitely see it's going to be up to Premier League level. So I, I think I, I think he could be a star. Um, and I, I don't mean to be uh, over overrunning it. I'm just yeah. I'm worried that there uh, there is a little bit of a fitness issue there or or a sharpness issue in the speed, and that's the o- that's the only reservation I have for him. In fairness, he's a big lad too, isn't he? I didn't realize from watching him in the championship. I didn't realize he was so big, but he's like six three or six four, which is like it's pretty yeah. big for, for 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 a left and right forward. Like you know, they're 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 not usually that big. Like and he can move. Yeah. Like he's got the ball control, so if he can add. A bit of football IQ like to that size, that speed, like there's definitely mm-hmm. potential there. I think he's the kind of player a goal will do wonders for you know. Absolutely, and like he he could be that Swiss Army knife if, if if he if he ups his game and ups his speed, you know you can see there's a footballer there already. Everything else will will hopefully come with time, and uh, it, it it is an exciting one. I was a little bit deflated when he when he signed first. I thought. Has this guy actually run his course? Is he is he not going to be much more than a championship footballer? And in fact, he, he said during the week the owner Edmer, he said to him he's a championship footballer. So I think oh, that's yeah. his way of uh, of of upping his game. But uh, it, it's um, and look, that's that's all about man management and getting the best out of him. So to, to tell him he's a world beater at this stage would be completely wrong too. But I've great hopes now. I'm look, I'm looking forward to seeing how he develops, and he could turn out to be a really good bargain for us in the future. Just with um, what you were mentioning about McGinn there and how important he's going to be today, but like you can imagine too, like how bad he felt like missing three games. Like you know, you can you know he he loves the club. You can tell when he plays. Like I think I think he's going to come in today, even though the players won't feel that. But I think McGinn will feel he almost owes him a performance when he's been outstanding all season. But I think you could see a special performance from today. You know, absolutely. He's 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 a big man. He's he's a he's a leader amongst men in there. We like big man as as I mean a big talent and a big uh, a big voice within the group. So it's it's great to have him back in there. Um, you know he's a, he's obviously a fan's favorite. I think that sending off could have went either way. I still believe the referee got it wrong and he rose to what the reaction was on the bench for for Spurs. I think the game is gone if that's a red card, but that's just me being a grumpy old man, and I'm fine with that. <laughs> if, if people want to disagree with me, that's absolutely fine. But uh, yeah, I, do, I just felt that it shouldn't have been a red card. You know, people have good friends of mine, Villa fans, have said absolutely a red card. It's just an, it's just annoyed me ever since it happened, and I think the referee got caught up in the in in the occasion. And I think if he'd have given a yellow, I don't think VAR would have said you need to up- upgrade this to oh, a red. Anyway, yeah. Um I, I I'm very happy we managed to take four points out of three tough tough enough fixtures though without him as well. Like we've done okay. I mean the Man City game it, it is what it is. But like I thought I thought the four points against Wolves and West Ham was a good four points. Because we weren't great against West Ham. I thought we controlled right. the game against Wolves but and you know to get to Champions League, you need these games where you, if you can't win, you know, don't lose. And I thought that West Ham was like that. We, we actually probably could have won it in the end, but, um, <laughs> yeah, but okay. I think it was a fair result. But I, I think yeah. it's an important point that you come the end of the season when you go down to West Ham and get a point because they are decent at home. And those physical sides are typically the sides we've struggled against. Like, so if you can take a point away from like that, you know, especially because yeah. they, after beating them 4 0 at Villa Park, they would have been well up for that as well, you know. So, Absolutely. Well, I yeah. think without McGinn, I think those three, apart from the City game, obviously, I think I think overall we didn't come out too too bad out of it, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we'll look back at that point and and, and be uh, a little bit happier than than we were when we got it. Yeah. Um, I, I suppose it feels it feels much longer without McGinn because of the international break and everything that went around it. So he probably hasn't had the break that we would have wanted him to have either of his three match ban because he had to go away and play two games. Yeah, for the international break, break, yeah. Yeah, but look, yeah. I'm sure we're going to see him back at his uh, effervescent self today. And uh, I think that's a good enough time to, to leave it. The 750 people are in there. If you give us a thumbs up, we'd really appreciate it. Spud, thanks so much for your time. I know it's the pushing on for, what, what time is it there now? Uh, it's oh. a 10 o'clock kickoff tonight, so it's half nine now. Oh, which, is, which, which is a really good kickoff time for me, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's in bed and, and the beer's in the fridge. It's in bed and like the beer's it. in the fridge, right? Yeah, because uh, when the clocks went back in, in Ireland and the UK last week, that, that took uh, the time difference to only seven hours. So, I mean, <laughs> I I always explain that, like, you know, since I moved to Australia 15 years ago, like, following following Villa is like, you know, having a newborn baby in, in the house every week 
for 38 weeks every year because you just you just have you have to get up at random times and you know sometimes you're getting up to deal with a lot of shit too sometimes it's beautiful you know it's just it's the, yeah, yeah. but uh thankfully the last uh the last 12 or the last 12 or 18 months has been a pleasure you know you're kind of you're kind of back to looking forward to getting up for every game and you know you're kind of bouncing out of the bed at three o'clock knowing that at least you know you're going into every game at least you're going to compete whereas there was, there was quite a time where i thought it didn't matter i always got up for every game but there was some games uh there was there was periods and seasons that was somewhere harder than other let's just say <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine and bear in mind what what's gone on in that 15 years that you've been in australia yeah. <laughs> I, I i can't I, I would probably have lost my love for aston villa in that time if i had to get up at three o'clock in the morning to watch the games <laughs> but as i always say you, you know we, we get we get people in the comments there was there was a lady on the other night from alaska we, we've yeah. got we've got guys in Brazil. We've got guys in Japan. We've got we had someone in the comments there from New Zealand. I lost the comment. I meant to put it up there, so he's a bit later than you in the evening tonight. Um, but it's it's amazing that the, the community that we have here, that the people from all around the world come in and say hello. And I just wanted to say thanks very much for for everybody that comes in here, and and especially to you, Spud, because uh, I know I I, I suffer a, a little bit with my confidence, and when I when I hang up after doing a podcast, it's always good when you say. Fair play to you. You were right there with that comment, and it, it, it's not. I know I'm not everybody's cup of tea, but uh, I am what I am, and I won't be changing for anybody. But uh, it's nice to know that there's people coming in from all around the world, and they, they've decided to listen to us as opposed to listening to Sky or BT. Right. Blow smoke up the ass of the big six before we play our game. So hope everybody gets. Hope everybody gets nice and settled and ready for the game today. Uh, again, we appreciate you all for coming. Uh, enjoy the game and we will be back with some kind of uh, after match I don't know what Neil is going to be like by the time that wraps <laughs> out <laughs> we'll see how it goes thanks a million um, Mark we'll chat to you soon up the villa my pleasure mate up the villa up the villa